last couple of weeks have been a little bit annoying for me. I have been stuck in Seattle and I've been trying to get out of the city and to someplace a little bit more peaceful. But for some reason, every time I try to get out, I always have to go back and I've gotten part way out and then got called back and had to go back into the city and I just got a call and I might have to go back into the city again. <laughs> it's annoying. I'm not going to worry about it right now. I'll deal with that later, but I think first, uh, since I'm kind of halfway to where I would kind of like to be, uh, I think I will just continue on instead of right here, this noisy area. There's a trash truck again for the third time this morning. I gotta get out of here. Well, would you look at that? We've got a little sun out this morning. That's nice to see. Uh, now, the first thing I need to think about is getting some water. I am almost completely out of water. I think I've just got a couple gallons left here in the van. That makes me nervous. Uh, but I can get water sort of for free if I go to a Washington State Park. And there's lots of Washington State Parks around, especially around this area. I'm going to head out to uh, one called Kitsap Memorial State Park. Tiny little park uh, that even some locals don't know about. It's a smaller park in the Washington State Park system, so it doesn't have all the amenities that some of the bigger parks do. But it still has some camping and showers and, of course, restrooms and places to get water. So that's where I'm going to go. And if you are going to go to Washington State Park, you do need to get uh, a Discover Pass. Uh, there's two Discover Passes that you can get. Uh, one is for day use. Uh, this one happens to be a year pass, and it runs uh, a calendar year for when you buy it. Uh, you just put your plate number, your license plate number, on the pass and hang it up on your rearview mirror. Now, if you don't have a state park pass, you can still go in and get some water and use the restrooms, but you're only allowed to stay there for 15 minutes. So I think if you're going to spend any time at all in Washington State, probably a good idea to get the Discover Pass just because it kind of opens up some possibilities for you. So I am ready to go and I should probably get there as soon as I can because I haven't had any breakfast. I'm waiting till I get there to make breakfast. So let's get on the road. Here we are, Kitsap Memorial Park. Uh, as I mentioned before, this is one of the smaller parks. There are smaller uh, Washington State parks than this one too, but um, this one has uh, quite a bit going on here. There is camping, uh, as you can see behind us here, and then there's this whole big day use area. Even though this is a smaller park with fewer like walking trails and things, I still really like this one. Used to spend a lot of time out here. Uh, now, I need to get breakfast started, but before I feed myself, I need to feed my solar because it's been pretty dark the last few days, so uh, my battery needs all the help it can get. So before I get my breakfast going, I'm going to get my solar panel put up, my extra solar panel put up, and uh, feed as much power into my battery as I can while the sun is out. Now, to make this as easy as possible for me, uh, I have added uh, some branch connectors onto my solar panel wires that are already here. So these are the wires from my glass panel that is permanently attached to my roof. And they have these MC4 connectors, they call them. And then I just found an adapter on Amazon that adapts from the MC4 to a Anderson connector, which is a much easier connector for me to kind of deal with. Now my foldable panel, it's a Rock Pals foldable panel, has a DC barrel plug on the end of it. So in order to hook the panel up to this, I just made up a little uh, adapter 
that has the Anderson connector on it and then a barrel plug on the other side. It might look a little bit complicated, but it's pretty easy. I just needed an easy, quick way to adapt from this barrel connector to my system here, and this is just the easiest way that I found to do it. Funny thing, because I bought this connector that goes from the MC4 to the Anderson, uh, it's backwards. So the, uh, the red is actually negative, the black is positive. I put a little bit of red electrical tape just to remind me that this is actually not the correct colors. But uh, other than just a little minor annoyance, it really works quite well. Especially after we've had several days that are really dark, this just makes it super easy for me to uh, get out my foldable solar panel and just add a little bit more power into my system because sometimes I need it. Well, I've almost finished my coffee off. That's not good. But before I make any more, I better eat some food. I, uh, I always tell people that caffeine doesn't really affect me, but I will feel a little bit blah if I drink too much caffeine. Uh, I'm drinking some light roast stuff and it's pretty high in caffeine. Um, so before I uh, get uh, too jazzed up, I better get some food on. So I'm gonna make some sausage and eggs for breakfast. I've been trying to get away from my oatmeal days. Um, I still have a bunch of oatmeal and I still eat it from time to time, but I just have been finding that if I really kind of get... Why is this having trouble? Okay. I'm having a little trouble with my electronic lighter lately. It's making a funny noise. I don't know if you can hear that. Yeah, I don't know. It's a strange, strange thing. It might be dying. I keep saying I should get another one of these things, but I just don't really want to order one. Um, anyway, I've been noticing that if I eat more protein in the morning versus uh, oatmeal, I do feel a little bit better. So I've been usually just keeping the oatmeal for snacks. If I want a snack, I'll make some oatmeal, but not eating up for breakfast too much lately. Well, I've got a few Trader Joe's eggs left over. I have not been happy with this batch. Uh, there have been a few that have had blood spots in them that really grosses me out. Um, I have learned to break them into a bowl instead of just tossing them into a pan. Normally I don't like to dirty up a bowl. I just would break them into the pan, scramble them in the pan because it just doesn't, doesn't really make any difference to me to uh, do them that way and it saves uh, dirtying up something that I have to clean. But I have not been so happy with the quality of these, so I'm back to breaking them in a bowl so that I can take a good look at them. These are all right. I don't think I'm gonna buy these again. Shame on you, Trader Joe's. Well, I found some really nice whole grain bread uh, on sale. This was uh, less than $3. It looks awfully good. Um, this is from a local Seattle bakery uh, that is quite popular here in this area. Uh, only trouble is it's not sliced, so I'm going to have to uh, get my bread knife out. I do keep a bread knife. I found this one. It's, uh, it's a little comical to look at, but I went for it because uh, I like the shape of the serrations on this. A lot of bread knives have uh, really sharp uh, serrations on them, and those really don't cut very well. They look like they would, but they really don't cut very well. So you really want kind of a nice, gentle serration on a, a blade, and uh, so that's why I picked this one. Plus, it came with this really cool uh, sheath plastic that the knife just slides right into. So it kind of makes it easy for me to store this. It's not something I use very often, but it's really nice to be able to have a uh, bread knife on hand, just if you find something on sale like this. Kind of like how I talk about uh, having a coffee grinder. Now I have a super nice coffee grinder now, which uh, most people would not spend the money for, but you can buy 
cheap coffee grinders that would do a decent enough job just in case you find some beans that are whole grain, you know, whole beans that are, <laughs> I'm thinking whole grain, uh, whole beans that uh, are on sale. Grocery Outlet is one of those places. I bought some really super premium beans for three or four bucks a bag, and if I didn't have a coffee grinder, I would just, just had to pass them up. So kind of the same line of thinking here. I want to have something that would allow me to take advantage of sales if I see them. Boy, this bread is a little messy. Is it going to be worth it? We'll find out. I'll toast some up and uh, see if it was worth the $3. Boy, it looks like it's good bread, though. This will keep me going for a little bit. Uh, you know, one thing I notice is if I get a little sloppy with uh, cleaning out my pan, here this is a carbon steel pan, and it's normally really non-stick, but if I get sloppy about cleaning it out, it gets a little bit of buildup and then it starts to stick just a little bit. So I've got just a little bit of egg sticking. That means I need to give it a really good cleaning and uh, just give it another little coat of oil and get that non-stick back to where it should be. The reason I sometimes get lazy about cleaning this out as properly as I should is uh, because you really need to clean it out as soon as you're done cooking and then that means your food's going to start to get cold. But um, if you do just take a minute and give it a good scrub, you usually don't have to do too much to it. Uh, usually it keeps the uh, the seasoning up really well and then while it's still warm I usually just take and uh, wipe on a little bit of fresh oil set it back on the stove because the stove will still be hot at this point too and doing it that way seems like it keeps the seasoning up in good shape it's just I've been extra lazy lately now what I've been using to clean this out is this uh, this little brush here and I wasn't really sure what this was, but apparently it's coconut core, which is the outer rinds of the coconut. And it works really well. If I use something plastic on that pan, as soon as I pull it off the heat, it's gonna melt. So this, I found, has been a nice little alternative to uh, just using a Scotch-Brite uh, pad or something like that, because I can keep my fingers away from it with the shape of it. This has been a nice little tool if I use it, and if I use it properly. All right, before my breakfast gets cold, I'm gonna eat. Okay, this bread is worth the extra fuss. This is fantastic bread. I'm glad I bought it. Of course, I probably won't buy it again. I think it was 50% off. So uh, $3 is not much to spend on a nice big loaf like this of this caliber of quality, but um, don't know if I'd spend six or seven dollars a loaf on it, but I'm happy to have it now. Of course, uh, it might be really good because I've got it slathered with butter. <laughs> well, it might be time to get my water filled up. Uh, like I said before, I've only got a couple gallons left in my tank, so I uh, shouldn't put this off for too much longer. This is the one thing that I need to do more than anything else today. So I found most of the Washington State Parks have water supplies that are just open and available for us to use. And this one is nice and easy to get to. Sometimes you gotta go searching for them, but that's why I like this park. It's just right here and available, easy to use. Well, that always takes me a few minutes because I have a lot of tanks to fill up. I've got the sink water tank, which I got topped up, and then I have two backup tanks, uh, 
the sink tank is about seven gallons uh, if I fill it right up and then the larger of the two backup tanks is five gallons and then I also have a four gallon tank as well so they're all topped up I also topped up my Berkey water filter and I'm feeling a lot more comfortable now about uh, my water situation uh, it's funny I was in this area a few weeks back and I needed water back then and I was thinking I would just drive out here fill up my water uh, but I had got called back into uh, the city into Seattle and uh, didn't end up coming out here ended up having to buy water when I was just a few miles away so I finally have been able to take advantage of the fact that I've got water source here I've got a place to park that's nice and peaceful so I'm pretty happy about how today is going finally after all this time You know, if there's one thing that I don't like about the state park is it's really hard to uh, park in the sun all day long. Like right now, I'm almost in the shade. I really kind of need the solar. And I think, I'm not exactly sure, but I think day use you're supposed to park here. But there's all that parking over there on the other side. I think I'm just going to take a chance and move over there. They can always tell me I have to move and I can come back over here. But... Uh, I need the solar, so I'm going to go chase the sun a little bit, move the van over. Well, I don't see why it would be a problem for me to park over here. There's plenty of parking, and there's certainly a lot more sun over here, so hopefully I am okay and I can just stay put. So I had two reasons why I wanted to come here to Kitsap Memorial State Park. Uh, one was, of course, I need to get water, get my tanks filled up. Uh, it's nice when I have a good clean source of water and I can get all my backup tanks filled up. So that's good and a load off my mind. Uh, but the other is I really kind of would like to take a shower, a hot shower. Now I take a bath every morning at my sink here and it works out really well. But since it's been months and months and months, at least five months, I think, since I've had a real hot shower, I would kind of like to have a hot shower and I used to come here to this state park quite frequently and just utilize their showers now I'm not exactly sure but I think they frown on people using the showers if they're not staying at the campground it was never a problem in the past so I'm hoping it still isn't going to be a problem uh, I still actually have tokens for the showers I've had these for what, that's more than two and a half years now. I might need more tokens. I think I'm just going to go get some more tokens. There is a machine right at the little uh, kiosk going into the camping area. So I'm just going to go and uh, put a dollar bill in, maybe two dollar bills, and get some tokens just so I know I have enough. And hopefully nobody gets after me uh, because after thinking about having a nice long hot shower, I really want to have a nice long hot shower, so hopefully they won't kick me out. Got this backpack put together here that has all of my shower stuff in it. I don't have to think about anything. It's got my shower sandals and soap and everything else that I'll need uh, if I can get to a shower. Just haven't used it yet because haven't been anywhere around that I could actually go in and take a shower before now. Um, although not for lack of trying, I kept trying to get out here like I was talking about earlier and uh, I've just had bad luck getting out to um, the Olympic Peninsula here for some reason. I don't really know why. It's almost like I feel like the universe is telling me that I shouldn't go to the Olympics, which is crazy because it's, I think, the best part of Washington State. Well, as it turned out, there wasn't anybody at the little shack to tell me I couldn't get tokens, so I got two dollars worth uh, one dollar gives you two tokens, and then now that I'm in here, I see that uh, one token is three minutes of shower time. So I've got plenty of tokens to uh, take a nice, long, hot, luxurious shower. So nothing fancy, but they're fairly clean and fairly updated. And as I remember, they had good hot water here. Now it's time for you to go away. Oh, that was so wonderful. Uh, I 
took a very long and a very luxurious shower. I actually used four tokens. I do have two left. And if I didn't mention it before, these tokens are good for any Washington State Park. So no matter where you get them from, you can use them at any Washington State Park. So I kind of like to have a couple hanging around just in case I am driving by a state park and can get in to use the showers. Some of the state parks are a little more difficult to get to the showers than this one. I do feel a little uh, bad about taking that long of a shower, but it has been at least five months since I have taken a shower, so maybe I shouldn't feel so bad. Uh, I didn't realize how stinky I was, which is why I went ahead and just used the four tokens and took that long of a shower. Uh, feels good to have some nice clean clothes on. I really wanted to do some laundry here since I have access to water. I just do laundry by hand and then hang it up to dry, but uh, I was thinking it wasn't going to be sunny at all out today, uh, so I didn't get on that. It's probably a little too late to do laundry, but uh, thinking about how filthy I was, I am thinking I should probably just go ahead and change my sheets out, put some fresh sheets on the bed. Um, would be a good idea. I should probably put some fresh underwear on too, but eh, I don't I don't want to get carried away. Uh, we'll just do the sheets. Well, I'm back in the shade again, not bringing much solar in. Looks like there's one or two spots that have a little bit of sun over there, but I don't know if it's really worth chasing the sun. It's only going to be sunny there for a couple of minutes. You know, I forgot to mention something. Whenever I talk about solar, people kind of get after me and tell me that I should have my van's engine charging my house battery, and I don't have that for a very specific reason, and that is because I normally only drive about five miles a day. Now, the last two weeks or so, I've been driving a lot more, uh, significantly more. I've been up to uh, five to ten miles a day, which is a lot of mileage for me. It's not something I'm used to driving, and I don't want to be driving that much. So I'm trying to get back to that five miles or under, the return of investment to buy the equipment to charge my battery off of my van's alternator, it just doesn't make sense uh, with how much I drive. Now, if I drove like a normal person, uh, had a long commute to work, or just, you know, drove around for work, or just drove around for whatever reason, it would make a whole lot more sense for me to have my alternator charging my house battery. But because I don't, and because my plan is to always drive less, just doesn't make sense, at least right now, to add an alternator charging uh, system. Um, now, I'm not saying that I won't ever do that. I'm just saying that it hasn't made sense. Maybe in the future it will make more sense. But over the last six and a half years, I just have not been in a position that I think it's a good return on the money. Uh, so it's not something that I do. So people get after me. I've actually been cursed out because I don't want my alternator charging my house battery. <laughs> which I find really funny. I mean, I don't know why people get hot under the collar about how I am charging and, uh, you know, getting power, but it really irritates people. So please don't curse me out. If you don't like the way I'm charging my van, um, yeah, don't come over. I won't make you coffee ever. <laughs> All right, important stuff is done. Well, except for laundry. I did have a little project I wanted to finish, but that's a two-minute project, so that can wait. Um, yeah, let's just go take a walk. Uh, this is a really cool little area, although it's a small uh, park, so there's not a whole lot to do or see. But there is a really nice view when we get out toward the water. So some of these little structures are here to uh, reserve and you can use them for gatherings and things. Uh, across the way they also have some cabins that you can rent if you didn't want to camp and rough it out here.
So there aren't a whole lot of hiking trails here, but there is a little trail down to the water that has the best views in my opinion. So, as a place to camp, I'm not sure I would recommend Kitsap Memorial State Park, but as a place to hang out for the day, uh, certainly is nice and pretty and tranquil. So, uh, if you are in the area, this is one of the many, many state parks you might want to consider. Uh, but again, if you're camping, there's probably better options out there uh, and very close by, too. And I need a haircut. Yeah. Yeah, I need a haircut really soon. Well, this foldable panel is not doing me much good. I guess I can put that away. Although, I don't think uh, my glass panel is doing much either. It's all shaded over here. Now, just in case somebody wants to yell and curse me out anymore, I just want to show you, since I have upgraded to this Victron controller, uh, it gives me all this data, and this goes back days and days. And you can see I've got good days and I've got not-so-great days, only bringing in 8 watts at the moment. But again, got plenty of power, more power than I've used today. So in my mind, I'm okay, as long as I don't dip under 80% of the battery's capacity, I am okay. Well, I am ready for a little bit of lunch. Well, I guess this would be dinner. I think I missed lunch. Too late. Um, but since I have this really good bread and I have some leftover hamburger, I'm going to make a hamburger. Uh, seems like, I don't know how this is, but it seems like I always have a hamburger whenever I have you following along with me. And I'm kind of embarrassed about that. I really don't eat hamburgers every day, although it probably looks like it if you're uh, watching my vlogs. Well, while I'm waiting for those burgers to cook, I'm going to have a little guacamole. This is guacamole that was on sale, so I bought it. I normally don't buy these little tiny packages, but... Yeah, they were good. Um, and I had some sale chips, these blue chips. They're okay, I guess. Tied me over for uh, waiting for dinner here. I didn't intend to uh, cook both of these, but figured the meat was kind of close to its use-by date, so be a good idea just to cook it but now that I have cooked it I think I might just eat it I'm hungry well whether you believe me or not that I don't eat a hamburger every day um, I don't really care uh, this one looks pretty good and it's been at least a few days since I've had one again believe it or not it's a little odd this ranger pulled up, and I thought he was just checking to see if people had Discover Passes, but he's been walking around talking to people. Kind of makes me wonder what's going on. Also makes me think maybe it's time to leave. It's been quiet and peaceful, though. Well, I don't know what's going on with that ranger, if he's looking for somebody or if something's going on, but I'm not going to worry about it. Um, there's one little thing I wanted to do today. This is not really important, but just one of the little things I wanted to get done today. So this is a little uh, phone mount that I put together, and I've got a little video on this. I did this recently, and I just have two little things that I don't like about it. Uh, one, I used a really big magnet for the phone side here, and it was just too big. And then I realized that uh, I had another magnet, so I just swapped it out. Since this one's, I think, only a 16 to 20 pound magnet, something like that. Uh, I've had this magnet for a long time, 
and I used the bigger magnet for something else. It works better for that. So that problem is solved. Uh, but the other problem I have is this is just a little bit too low uh, to the tabletop here. So usually I set this somewhere on my tabletop and that way I can keep my phone in one spot. I don't have to worry about knocking it over when I'm cooking uh, or getting ready in the morning. I normally run YouTube all the time. I just watch YouTube constantly. Uh, it's kind of like background noise for me, so I need a good place to put my phone anyway. So uh, I like this, it's just that it's too low. So I'm gonna fix that by um, just extending it. I have what's called a coupling nut on one end of it here. I was gonna put the coupling nut just on this whole assembly, just to raise it up a little bit, but this was the biggest coupling nut I could find. And a coupling nut is just what it sounds like. It's just basically a large nut, uh, except it's large enough that you can get threads in on both sides to couple something together. Uh, if you could imagine it being sliced down into smaller pieces, it would be just a regular nut for a, for a bolt. Um, so I figure the easiest way for me to do this and probably the best way for me to do this since I want a little height on this would be to just add this whole bit to the bit that I have. So all I'm going to need to do is take this magnet off again so I just swap this out and put this on in place and then put the magnet on top of this one and then that'll get me the height that I need. And that probably sounds a lot more complicated than what I gotta do. Okay, so I'm just gonna remove this. Anybody home? Yep. Oh. Uh, you know you're discovered. Okay, I got slightly interrupted. Not a big deal, but the ranger did come over and talk to me. He said my pass was expired. Uh, I bought my Discover Pass at an REI in, in why was I gonna say LA? In Seattle. And the kid that put the date on it messed up scribbled the date out and put a different date in and then his threes looked like twos so the ranger thought that it was expired i told him hey i just bought that at rei uh, and he said well we'll let you slide today but you'll have to go get it taken care of so i'm gonna have to go back to the closest rei i can find see if they'll issue me a new pass uh, and one that actually is written legibly this is a little irritating because every time I try to head out to the Olympic Peninsula, something gets in my way and I have to turn around and go back. So now, instead of having the option of going out to the Olympic Peninsula tonight or tomorrow, I can't. I gotta go back and try to take care of this Discover Pass. Irritating. <laughs> anyway, let me finish this little project since it is a two-minute project and then I'll decide what I'm gonna do okay back to this I've removed the tape so I can get to the little nut here and this might be harder than I anticipate oh no it isn't or this is the other little magic arm and I have the coupling nut on the bottom so I'll just screw this on and then put this back on. I'm out of frame now. This how-to stuff is difficult. Okay, then I'll just put the nut back on this, tighten it down, and now this is a bit long and gangly, but it should give me the height that I need to not be annoyed with this whole thing. Okay, got a new piece of tape on this, and that way it won't scratch up my phone. And I think this is gonna work. Um, it's a little taller than I probably need, but I've got lots of adjustment here because of these little magic arms. I can really move this around quite a bit. Uh, one of my issues is if I'm charging my phone here on my counter, with it being so low, I couldn't get the charge cable uh, plugged in. So now this gives me a little height, so I won't have any trouble getting the charge cable plugged in, and also it kind of frees up my workspace a little bit. I've got such a small amount of kitchen space here that uh, with the phone down low to the countertop, it means it takes up all that space that I could use for something else. 
So, I think this is going to work. Okay, so here's the plan. I am making some road coffee, and while I was waiting for the water to boil, well, I guess I'm still waiting for the water to boil, but while I was waiting for the water to boil, I called up the closest REI, which is in Silverdale, which apparently is only 15 minutes away. I didn't quite realize it was that close, but that's a good thing because I asked them if they had Discover Passes in stock at Silverdale. They said yes. So, as soon as my coffee is done, I'm gonna hot foot it over there. Well, I don't really need to go that quickly. I've got a couple hours before they close. So I'm gonna go over there and just see if they will make this right. Uh, this is not the store I bought this Discover Pass from, so uh, I don't know how this is gonna go, but um, this is an interesting day. Uh, not a bad day, not a bad day, but interesting. Okay, I got my road coffee, so I am ready to go. Um, I am curious as to how this is going to go down. Uh, it'll be interesting to see if REI's legendary service uh, is all that it's cracked up to be. Um, it's always been good for me in the past. I've only ever had two problems with things I bought at REI over the years, and both of those things I took back, and it was just no problem whatsoever to get uh, a exchange on one and a refund on the other so hopefully it's going to be just as simple and easy as it's always been but you never know uh, so let's go Okay, was I worried? I wasn't worried because REI has great customer service. I have a new pass, new Discover Pass. Uh, I don't want you to see my plate number, but look at that. She's got nice penmanship. Uh, not like the other person that uh, <laughs> made out the other one. So this one shouldn't be a problem. Um, it did take them a little while to figure out what to do. It's kind of an unusual situation. Uh, she's never seen it before, so uh, took them a couple of minutes. They uh, figured it out, gave me the new pass, and I am good to go. So uh, no problem here, except I was planning on being out in the woods somewhere, but I've now driven in the wrong direction, and it's starting to get dark. I don't really like driving around here after dark because there are lots of animals that get out into the road and into the highway too. So I need to decide if I'm going to brave the roads and the maybe sporadic animals around or if I'm going to try to park around here. I've always had trouble parking in Silverdale here. Um, Silverdale's a pretty decent town. But there's very little street parking, which is what I normally do. Uh, I need to figure out what I want to do and where I'm going to park tonight. But at least I got my pass, so that's good. And maybe, just maybe, I can get out to the Olympic Peninsula at some point now. At least until the next thing comes up. <laughs> hey, thanks for watching, everybody. I really appreciate it.